So I would like to start this by saying that in the past, at some point, I have literally had the thought, what idiot sticks their hand in a moving saw blade? The answer to that question, this idiot. I wish I had some sort of cool, useful safety tip to share with you, like don't do this and you'll be fine. Which obviously, yeah, don't do what I did and you'll be fine. But like what I did with something every single person slash woodworker slash anyone who is over the age of five knows not to do. Basically, I was cutting, I was ripping one of the edge pieces for this countertop and I finished the cut. I turned off the saw with my right hand and my brain being on autopilot went to go move the off piece of wood with my left hand. And I'm sure you can guess exactly what happened at that point. It was so fast. And the irony was when it happened, I didn't even notice it happen at first. Um, it didn't hurt at all. You'd think chopping your thumb off would hurt a lot. It didn't. In fact, like I remember all of a sudden, I guess I got some kind of signal because I was like, oh, did I nick myself? And at this point, I'm not even panicking yet. I don't know why I wasn't panicking. I guess maybe it was just too fast, but I, was, I literally had the thought, did I nick myself, pull back my thumb to look and see how bad it was? And that, seeing it, was the moment when I realized something bad just happened. And I remember looking at it and I had like all of these thoughts at once, just like utter adrenaline rush of panic first and then seeing a white circle and realizing that was bone and then realizing that, oh, I need to go to the emergency room and I need to go there now. And so I basically just ran out of the shop um, and my thumb was still hanging on by a little bit of skin about right there. So I cut through here and then the skin was right there. And um, I immediately just curled my hand around my thumb because I was really afraid I would knock it and the thumb would just come off entirely. And I, I don't know if I could have handled it if my thumb was in two separate pieces. Like I basically cut it off. It was hanging by some skin, but the fact it was still hanging by some skin in my head, there's a difference. It was still on, right? So I curled my hand around it like that and ran up the stairs to try and find my keys. Um, it was actually not bleeding a lot. Like, I think by curling my hand around it, I don't know, it wasn't bleeding that much. I did not bleed all over the shop. I did not bleed all over my house. I actually didn't have a single drop of blood on me by the end of the night. So like, it was bleeding, but it was not making a giant mess. So I was kind of running around the house trying to find my keys. Um, I did not wrap it in anything because I did not have the wherewithal to do that whatsoever. Um, I found my keys. I kind of had the thought of like, should I call an ambulance? And I, I thought about that for maybe a split second and settled on no, like ambulances are for people who are dying. I am not dying. Like I cut my thumb. This is an emergency, but I am not dying. And maybe, I don't know. I made it to the hospital just fine. I did drive myself. I had a right hand that was my right hand is my dominant hand. I got there and it probably was not the safest decision I have ever made, but I made it there. I made it there. I was somewhat lucky that when I got to the emergency room, they were able to see me pretty quickly. I was in a room being examined by a doctor probably 30 minutes after I cut my thumb. Um, the downside of that was the emergency room doctor took one look at my hand and said, I can't handle that. Um, which kind of sucked. <laughs> they sent me off for x-rays. I came back and he was kind of like, yes, you cut all the way through the bone. And I was like, yeah, I know. I saw the circle. Um, and then he was just like, well, I can't handle this. I can either transfer you to another hospital or I'm going to try and call in one of our orthopedic surgeons. For better or for worse, the orthopedic surgeon was able to come in. By the time he got there though, I had been sitting in that hospital room or in that emergency room for about three hours, which looking back three hours is that not that much time. But when you're sitting there in a panic, having no idea if your thumb is going to live or die, if they could reattach, three hours seems like a very long time. <laughs> it was a very, it's a long three hours. But the doctor finally got there. It was probably about 8.15 when the orthopedic surgeon 
showed up um, and first saw my thumb. I would say I cut my thumb at about five. Um, and he looked at it and he kind of said, okay, good news here is the tissue, it's been three hours and the tissue on the chopped part is still looking alive. It like hasn't turned black, it doesn't look dead, yay. The bad thing is like, and, and it's alive because that little bit of skin apparently had enough blood flowing through it that it was able to keep the thumb tip alive. Um, the bad part is that he's afraid if he did anything, he would mess with that. He might accidentally break some of those blood vessels and then my thumb would die. So he basically that night did the bare minimum. He cleaned it and then stitched my thumb back together and sent me home um, with a giant cast on. I had a giant cast on. <laughs> and so I went home and he said, come back tomorrow morning and we'll look and hopefully it's still alive. And if it's turned black, it's dead. If it's white, it's dead. If it's, you know, anything else, <laughs> it's hopefully still alive. So I did that. Next morning I went back and he was like, well, it was pretty purple the next morning, but he was like, that's about as good as it's going to look at this point. And I was like, all right. So he sent me home again um, and said, come back Friday. And that was Tuesday. I cut my thumb Monday. And then I went back to see him again on Friday. And Friday was a totally different story. He took one look at my thumb on Friday and was like, hmm. And I was like, hmm, hmm, is not like the facial expression I want him to have when he looks at my thumb. And he kind of says to me, why, or when did it turn this purple? And I was like, I don't know. I thought it's been purple the whole time. Like, <laughs> um, and he kind of still is like, hmm, and I'm like, hmm. And then he tells me that, you know, we can leave it for the weekend, but it's unlikely to live. That like, we'll, we'll give it the weekend, see if it can perform a miracle, but like, don't get your hopes up. Expect to amputate Monday morning. I was not excited about that plan. I don't know what it is. There's a difference in my head. At that point, I was aware that I had seriously damaged my finger. Um, he had told me the night I was in the emergency room that I would, no matter what happened, best case scenario, I would never bend my thumb again, that I had cut through the joint. But I don't know if it's me being 30 year old female and just being vain, I don't know. But there's something about actually losing the thumb tip that just makes a big difference in my head. So when I left Friday morning, I kind of was like, well, now what do I do? Like, I would like to find someone who is more willing to help my thumb live because my doctor's plan was send it home, see if it lives or not. And I was fine with that, but also actually, no, I wasn't fine with that at all. I wanted to do whatever I could to still have a thumb tip in a week. Um, and at the very least, I wanted to feel that if it did have to be amputated, that I did everything I could to save it. So I went home and I am somewhat lucky in that I live in Minneapolis, Minnesota, which is about two hours or an hour and a half drive from the Mayo Clinic in Rochester. And if you're not familiar with the Mayo Clinic, they are one of the best hospitals in the country, probably also one of the best in the world. And so I was like, well, let's call them. <laughs> like if Mayo can't save my thumb, nobody can. So I called them up and I like, I literally just called like a general number and was like, can you connect me with the people who would save my thumb basically? <laughs> like, I don't know. I don't know who that's going to be. If that's like hand or orthopedics, like, I don't know, just <laughs> connect me with those people. Um, and they, and they did. And I remember the lady I was talking to was like, oh, we might be able to see you in, like get you in on Monday, see you on Monday. And I remember saying to her, no, no, no. Like my thumb's going to be dead by Monday. <laughs> like, is there any way you can get me in earlier? Um, and she said to me, okay, I'll, I'll talk to the doctor and see what I can do and I'll call you back. And so she called me back and she said, we can see you at two. And by that point it was like noon and I was like, oh, oh God. And so I like just kind of grabbed my purse, jumped in the car and drove down there. Um, very spontaneous. <laughs> and I got there and the doctor looked at it. And at this point it was, it was still basically a blueberry, like <laughs> quite purple. And he said, okay, like he was like, I don't want to open it up because 
there's like it's still alive it's been three days and it's still alive it's still very purple the blood is not leaving your thumb but it's still alive and i don't want to kill that um like opening it up would be risky so he had some plans to admit me to the hospital and put me on basically a blood thinner anti-clotting thing um, and then make sure my thumb stayed really warm because apparently warmth opens up the vessels and makes it more likely that the blood is going to make it back into my thumb. They also ended up cutting like a pretty big slit in the top of my thumb to try and bleed it out so that the blood would leave basically um, while the vessels were reconnecting. Or at least that's how I understood it. Maybe that wasn't what was actually happening, but like that's what I thought was happening. And so he was going to admit me, keep the thumb warm, do all of these other fancy things. And I'm sitting there like you, like kind of stunned by this. Like you admit people to the hospital over a thumb? <laughs> really? <laughs> okay. I was also not at all prepared to be admitted to the hospital. First off, I had my second COVID vaccine appointment that night. And I'm a teacher, so this was still in the time when vaccines were really, really hard to get. Um, and I was like, well, I can't miss my COVID vaccine, God. So I told him I'm going to go back to Minneapolis, pack a bag and get a vaccine, feed the cat, and then come back. And he was amenable to this, thankfully. Um, he said, yes, okay, that's fine. So I did that. It was a lot of driving, one one-handed driving <laughs> in one day, um, about, what, four and a half hours. And then I spent five days in the hospital um, to save my little thumb tip, all because of a split second with a saw. So five days later, they had kind of weaned me off all of the like thumb saving things that they were doing. And at this point, my doctor was like, well, if it can't live on its own now, like we, we've done everything we can basically. Um, you might notice at no point in any of this did they go in and reconstruct blood vessels or put any sort of stabilization into my thumb. And the doctor at Mayo basically was like, we can't do that three days later. Um, at some point it's gonna need to be stabilized, but he was very worried about opening it back up. Um, he thought that might destroy anything that's grown. So I was being sent home with a thumb that still needed to be stabilized. It had no pin in it. It had like, it was just some bone floating in my thumb. And so I went home and was still having to keep holding it up. In fact, if you go back and look at some of my old videos, I'll link to one right here that I, I, fil I filmed the intro literally like three days after I got home from the hospital. You can kind of see me holding my hand up in its little splint. I was holding it awkwardly like that because that's what I had to do. I had to keep my thumb elevated. So I went home, was holding it up. And every few minutes, I kind of like looked at it like, are you, are you still alive, little thumb? Still pink? Still pink? Okay. Um, because if it turned black, turn, it turning black was kind of my like worst nightmare at that point. So I was pretty anxious about it. And it had been a week by the time I got to go home. It had been over a week since I cut it. But at no point in any of this were people were like, oh, yes, your thumb is going to live. No one ever said that. I was super anxious for the next couple of weeks, always just checking my thumb, like, are you still alive? Are you still alive? Because like I said, I just could not, there was just something different in my head about it actually being amputated. I just didn't want that to happen. I liked having a thumb that at least looked kind of normal. And it's so sad. And I, I feel so shallow about that, that like the vanity was what mattered to me. Like I, I wanted my thumb to look normal. Like I have no feeling in the tip of my thumb right now. It's not like it's going to function normally when I have no nerves. Like I chopped off all the nerves, which is why you haven't really heard me talking about how much it hurt because it didn't hurt. Like it did not hurt. You know, I also then had no feeling in the tip of my thumb, which I'm sure going the rest of my life without having any feeling in my thumb would be bad but maybe I just don't know how bad it would be until it happens. Whereas like having a stump instead of a thumb tip is like very visual in my head. Let's go with that. Let's, let's make it out that I'm not a vain, shallow person. Thanks. It has now been two months since I cut my thumb and I guess, I don't know, seven weeks since they sent me home from the hospital. Um, my thumb is still alive. I've graduated to a tiny itty bitty splint. The bad news is though, it's still not stabilized. And at some point, someone's gonna have to go in and do surgery to stabilize it. 
And I say someone, it's gonna be my doctor at Mayo. It's not just a random person. Um, my doctor is still waiting for it to heal itself as much as it can before he goes in to stabilize the bone. And the bad part about that is that when he goes in to stabilize it, he kind of told me we're gonna have a risky few days where we're gonna be wondering if it lives or not again. Um, so I get to go through all of that anxiety, all of that, will my thumb live again in a, a, some number of months from now? I don't know if that's gonna be three months. I don't know if that's gonna be six months. I'm not really looking forward to it though. Like that, <laughs> it's gonna be miserable. All this though, to go back to why you woodworker might be curious and interested about this story. What can we take away? What do I wish I had done differently? Obviously, I wish I hadn't cut my thumb in the first place. And, you know, I played a lot of like, what if games about, or like, would you rather? Like, would I rather cut my pinky, cut three fingers? The only one that was clearly like winning was I'm so glad I cut my left thumb, not my right thumb, because if I had cut my right thumb, I would never write again. Like write like W-R-I-T-E. Um, and I'm a teacher. I do a lot of writing on the board, on papers, everywhere. Like I, I write. So yeah, really glad I cut my left thumb, not my right thumb. But I'd wish I hadn't cut it in the first place. And I keep thinking back of like, is there something I could have done differently? And yes, yes, if I had had a blade guard, this wouldn't have happened. So blade guards are cool, y'all. Use a blade guard. But I also am in this position of like, it was like, I have to face that this was entirely my fault. There was not someone there distracting me. I live by myself. My cat was not like screaming at the door. Like, I am the only person, and I guess when you live by yourself and something like this happens, you are the only person that can be blamed. You can't blame anyone else. You, like, it was you. <laughs> so it was absolutely my fault. But at the same point, I also feel like I did something very human that our brains have evolved to use as little calories as possible. And that means that when they make decisions, they're more likely to make the same decisions over and over again. And when you do the same activities, the same hand motions, same things, it, your, your brain goes into autopilot for a reason. It's because it's saving calories when it does that. And I, I wish it hadn't gone into autopilot, but I also recognize that that's, that's what your brain does. And I don't know how to stop that from happening. I mean, you can say, you know, I always stay 100% alert at my saw every time, but at some point, you're going to have used the saw enough that your brain is comfortable with it and your brain drifts. And that's exactly what happened to me. And you know, it was, it was my fault, but I also don't know how to stop my brain from doing that. Either way, I'm getting a saw stop, yay saw stops, which I thought it was unnecessary until it actually happened to me. And I kind of wonder, how much of the saw stop owning population has had a terrifying incident with a table saw, that, that that's how they make their money. The other big takeaway I really had from this was have a plan, y'all. I mentioned I went to the first emergency room and the doctor didn't really know what to do with me and eventually called in an orthopedic surgeon. And that was fine, like when I look back, what else was I going to do? That was the only emergency room that I knew the location of without having to look up. It was five minutes from my house. I was a panicked mess. Like that, that was all I could have done in that moment. In retrospect, later when I was going and trying to figure out where I should go, like where is someone that is actually an expert on injuries, like what happened to me? Um, I found that the American Association of Hand Trauma I think that's what it's called. I'll link to it in the description below. They have a website where they list all of the hospitals in the country who have a 24-7, 365 hand trauma surgeon on call. So if you go there at two in the morning after chopping your hand off, there will be someone who can come in who is an expert, who does this kind of thing all the time, who can come in immediately and do what they need to do to save your hand. And in retrospect, I wish I had known about that and I wish I had gone there the night I cut my finger. All this to say, I now know where the hand trauma hospital is in my area. And if this were ever to happen again, that is where I'd go. If you work with power tools on a regular basis, 
it is worth going to that website and figuring out if there is a hand trauma place near you and noting where it is. And, you know, if, God forbid, you injured yourself on a power tool, now you know exactly where to go. Um, so having a plan, you know, plan for the worst, hope for the best. Go look that up. Go find out where that hospital is. And while I hope you never have an accident like mine, if you do, you'll have the best possible outcome you can. Thanks and good luck.